Howdy. One moment while I freshen up a bit. Oh, what? Did you see the magic? I just like... <clears throat> Welcome to the vlog. Today we are looking at the five by far best state parks in California. Now I am a native Californian. I grew up here, same with my wife, and we both still to this day Love! That sounds a little too strong. <laughs> Words. These are just our personal favorites. There's no such thing as the best state parks. These are ones that if you haven't visited, you absolutely must. They're gems. They're jewels of California that you must go and visit. So, enough of my intro. Let's do this. Welcome to the vlog. We're gonna go five to one. These are in order and my personal preference favorites. Number five is Big Basin State Park. This is a state park that I had never visited until a few years ago and we kind of found it by accident. It is located kind of outside Santa Cruz. It's beautiful, there's redwoods there, but it is just the most classic state park kind of experience that I think you'd want. The visitor center, the little museum they have, the ranger station, like everything about it is just like quintessential. Is that proper? Here. Big Basin is California's oldest state park and it was established in 1902. The park also has over 81 miles of trails. When my wife and I visited, there is one thing to keep in mind. The road getting to the state park is crazy. It's like a lot, it's not an easy park to get to. Like if you want to get there, it's, it's a drive. It's a, it's an all day affair. Like it doesn't take all day to get there, but it's the kind of thing where you're not just going to pass by it on your way somewhere else. Like you're going specifically to the park, but it's well worth it. Number four on our list here is Torrey Pines. Torrey Pines. When you go to Torrey Pines, you get this kind of cowboy accent. You go to Torrey Pines. Torrey Pines is a place that we visited and discovered when we lived in San Diego, but it's not really a place that's known even to Southern California, San Diego residents. It's glorious. It, and I'll tell you, I'll explain why. Uh, before I get into the details of the park. There's two features of this park that I absolutely love. One is that it's just beautiful. It's uh, it's a very rare pine tree that you'll find all over. Um, and the pine tree is fine. It's mainly the trails that dot the coastline there that are beautiful. They interweave into these like very beautiful Southern California-esque forests um, into just beautiful views of the coastline. There's an amazing beach there, it's quiet, but the best part about it, my favorite anyways, is this little, this little museum that used to be a restaurant back in the 1930s or 40s um, on the Pacific Coast Highway, or what was originally the Pacific Coast Highway. And so it's been transformed into kind of the visitor center, but they still have information about the restaurant that used to be there. It just, the restaurant feels so classic, like, early automobile travel-ish-esque, whatever. And then also, the original original highway, the original Pacific Coast Highway um, in California is still there, and you can walk on it. It's close to like cars and stuff now, but you can actually walk a big, pretty significant chunk of the old highway, which I think is amazing. It's like the original pavement or cement or whatever from the 1930s, 1929, something like that. It's so cool. It's worth going to that state park just for that. But there's a lot more to do. Torrey Pines, it's amazing, that's number four. Let's move on. Number three spot. This is two, that's three, in case you were. Number three spot is a state park right outside of Monterey, California. It's actually just south of Monterey, going toward, actually past Carmel on Highway 1 and it is the Point Lobos State Park. Now Point Lobos, like Torrey Pines, is also a state natural reserve, and what that means is that both parks are very, very strict. They just really wanna protect the area, so. But I'm glad so, I'm glad so, because they're both amazing places. Just keep that in mind. Both of these are reserves, so they're pretty darn on, uh, on bringing food in and different things, so. My wife and I actually lived in Monterey for almost two years, and we never visited Point Lobos. I don't know why, but we visited the park um, a few years ago and were blown away by the beauty of that place. So it's located just south of Monterey, which I think is the most beautiful place in all the world. Point Lobos has been called the greatest meeting of land and water in the world. 
It's also known as the crown jewel of California's 280 state parks. Oh, one thing to keep in mind is that there is not much parking out of this park. Um, I'm reading here and it says that there's only 150 on-site parking spaces, but more than a million people visit every year. So if you visit like during the summer or the weekends, parking could be a problem. I recommend going in the winter because it's beautiful there in the winter and, uh, and not on weekends, but that's one of the nice things though, is even when it's like busy, there aren't many parking spaces. So there's not a ton of people that we've ever seen in the park at one time. I'm sure that's not true all the time, but anyways, Point Lobos, it is just absolutely gorgeous. If you want to see what I think is the most beautiful coastline, it's it. You just got to go. You just got to go. It's really, oh, it's really cool. Number two. Uh, we're now moving to the Northern California section of California for number two and number one. Uh, number two is Prairie Creek State Park. That's located way the heck up north in California on Highway 1. And it is a park that I spent a good chunk of my childhood going to. If you want to get out away from people, it's hard to beat. There's not many people up there. It has some of the most gorgeous redwood forests I've ever seen. Massive old growth redwoods. You have the ocean, you have Fern Canyon. It's really, it's, it's like this, oh, how do you describe it? It's like walking through a tunnel. All around it are these beautiful ferns that go up and all around you up really, really high. So you're just like surrounded by these gorgeous old ferns and that leads to the ocean. Um, there's also a ton of elk out there, which are beautiful because it's usually always foggy in the mornings. There's this beautiful coastal fog and you have these elk roaming around with these massive redwood trees and there's like nobody around. It's just very quiet. That park, uh, just talking about it makes you want to go there. It's amazing. Number two, similar to Prairie Creek, but it's not such a trek to get to. It's a very small campground. Not many people know about it. It's called Burlington. Burlington is like my, that's my spot. We spent the majority of our time camping when I was a kid. <sighs> this is the camp that we camped at, that I stayed at as a kid, at least twice a year. Well, at least once a year. Eight. This is it. This is the camp that we used to stay at, the actual campsite that we stayed at more often than any other one. The other one was down here. And I figured you were like, I wonder what other site they stayed in. That one down there. Dad, no, don't film this, don't film okay. this. Okay. Oh man, as a kid, we used to run down here and play all day long in this creek bed down here and this tree over here. You see that bridge over there? Ah, oh, that actually wasn't here when I was a kid. But this tree here, maybe I'll take you to see it. There is what they call a goose pin. Look at this. See, it has a doorway, like a hole. It's all burnt out in the middle of this thing. It's a small campground right in the Avenue of the Giants, which is a stretch of highway that's just off of Highway 101 uh, in the big old growth redwoods. It's gorgeous. And the campground is right there in the Avenue of the Giants. So you're surrounded by, at your campsite, massive, massive old redwoods. <sighs> Burlington, I think, offers the best look at what an old growth coastal redwood forest is all about. Okay, so that was the top five, but I do have three bonuses. <laughs> These were, um, why did I say it like that? That was stupid. Bonuses! <laughs> These are places that you should definitely go visit, but they didn't make the list, unfortunately. And I tried to get them on the list, but I wouldn't allow myself. The first one is Calaveras Big Trees, which is actually only about two hour drive from where we live. Um, Calaveras Big Trees, it's again, it's not a very popular state park, but it's really, really cool. It features sequoias. They are redwoods, but they're the sequoia redwoods, which are the fatter, really beefy bottom tree. They're huge. They're enormous trees. It's a beautiful park. Um, it's just a nice, nice getaway. It's a very cool, intimate uh, sort of state park. It's never very busy and uh, it's just a great place to get out and see what the Sierra Nevada foothills are like. Uh, right next to that state park is another state park called Columbia State Park and it is a, what do they call it? It's a state historic park. It's an old ghost town. 
Ah, it's so cool. It's fun to go to both. So you go to the Calaveras Big Trees, you walk around, you get outside, you see the trees, and then you go maybe get lunch in, what's it called? Columbia State Park. It's kind of, it's a little bit touristy, but it's very, very cool. They have stagecoach rides. Um, it is a state park, so there's a lot of information and museums, and it's an awesome place to just, if you want to have a really fun day and you're not too far from these places, it is a great place to spend the day. Oh, those two paired up together are amazing. Last on the list is a place that's only about 30 minutes from us here in uh, Placerville, and that is the town of Coloma, which is also a state park. Coloma is where gold was discovered in California by James Marshall back in 1848-ish, and uh, it's the site of it, and that's why there's a state park there. There's a very cool museum. It's a beautiful place to visit in the fall. They have a lot of like, you can gold pan there. They have like a blacksmith. There's a, I don't know. It's a great place to just like have a picnic. Just if you want a day out in a beautiful area, let the kids roam around. There's big, huge grass areas. There's like a little Indian village. It's just a fun place to hang out with your family. If you want to go to a state park that like has some good information, nice museums, things to do, but really is just a great place to spend the day with your family. There's the river there. Uh, Coloma is the place. Well, that did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Those were our five favorite state parks. I think the best state parks in California, plus three bonuses, so you're welcome. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. That helps us grow and get this video out to more people. Also, if you like the video and comment, that helps us a bunch too. We would sure dang appreciate it. Uh, we have videos like this quite a bit on the channel. A lot of outdoorsy stuff, a lot of, uh, well, ridiculous stuff from me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. A flow,